late February, we're over at Dinton Pastures on Black Swan Lake and it is looking prime for zigs. Been looking at the weather, keeping my eye on the weather coming up over the last few days and it's been grim, really wintry, big northerly winds and literally today it's turned into pretty much spring. I would say this is like weather for April, the flies are out, the birds are loving it and by God, them fish are gonna know about it. Hopefully, I've timed it right, because with zig fishing, for me, it is all about timing. You're fishing from little small windows sometimes. Sometimes they're blowing, I mean, look at these flies going mad. Um, I definitely feel really confident. I'm sure you can tell I'm really buzzed. I just wanna get the rods out. But I've got myself in a swim, seen a few fish this morning, more to the right, but looking at the angling pressure that's on the lake and probably due on the lake, um, I think I'm in with a good chance. Got loads of ups and downs in front of me. I've got to let it up. I've got loads to do. But yeah, it's looking really, really good. As with all my fishing, I've got to find the fish first. When I do find them, get myself in the swim, line them up with horizontal markers, and I'm also trying to gauge the distance that they're at. You know, the fish generally are huddled up in a big ball or swimming in long lines, you know, side by side. And if you're too far or too short, you may as well be on a different pond then it's all about the depth. I've got to get that marker fault out, find out how deep the water is, because it is literally percentages. Same with the distance thing, it's the same with depth. If you're a foot below, foot too tall, then you're just not going to get any bites. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 foot. It's slightly shallower to the left, it's 19 foot to the left, a sort of which we put three folks out now, it's getting progressively deeper, cast it towards that area that I've sort of seen the fish or as close to the fish as I feel I can get. Yeah, so I'm gonna go right up there. Sun's out, big wind's on. This is gonna be dropping off so it won't be as windy by later on and especially tomorrow morning through the night. So yeah, I'm gonna go right up there. I always start high and work my way down. It's much easier to trim zigs down than it is to retie fresh ones. So yeah, I'll probably go, what? 14, 15, 16 foot. I always like to stagger them a foot or two. And then if I get a bite on a certain depth, I'll switch them all over. Same with the colours as well. Probably do a variation of colours. But yeah, for now, definitely gonna go, yeah, up high and then we'll go from there. Wind's just dropping off nice as predicted. I've got the rods quipped up, three different distances, as I say. I'm gonna do three zigs, all different heights, but I am gonna put them out one at a time just because it's all muddy and sloppy in the swim. If I try and have, you know, the big long zigs, I'm going as tall as 15 foot. So I don't want to have them all lying around, getting all mud on them. As soon as you get all muddy, that's it. You know, you can start this, you know, you can picture the fish being able to be more visible. I want this hook wing coming off of you, nice and fresh, stretch it out straight, tie the zig up and get it straight out there. I've got my hooks all penned in nice and black. I, I, I prefer them like that, a bit more of a silhouette from the sea and obviously it's matching my foams, got black on all my foams here. So yeah, three rods, three different distances, three different heights, three different colours, chopping and changing, playing around. I don't know what the going method is at the minute, but as soon as I, if I'm lucky enough to get a bite, uh, confidence there, if I'm lucky enough to get a bite, um, I'll chop them all over to the same depth, same colours, same distance. I always think there's a bit of a misconception that zig fishing is all about in the summer. You will catch fish in the summer, up in the way as a course, but for me, it is literally then February, March, April, that spring period, it's prime for zig fishing. You know, all the fly hatches are going off, the fish are zooming around everywhere. There's no weed as well. I don't generally use uh, zigs around weed at all. So the white lake's nice and clear. All them flies going off, the birds going mad. Everything's waking up and they just go around gorging on them fly hatches. And that's exactly what you're mimicking with a zig. are out and I'm uh, I'm pretty confident, I ain't gonna lie, you can't not be really, I just know how devastating zigs can be, it's just all about depth, you know, the fish are in here, they're definitely in this bay, I haven't seen loads, you know, maybe seven or eight fish this morning and throughout the day, just hopefully they're gonna do what, well, I'm hoping they do, <laughs> back up a little bit once this wind really starts to settle down tonight 
There's a lot of pressure in here, so hopefully they're getting pushed around. We shall see. But yeah, super confident. Well, I've seen the morning out and it just hasn't materialised. See a few show, but the hatches have gone off absolutely mental. Uh, not making excuses, um, but I think there's just an abundance of natural food and I just can't compete with three little bits of foam. Maybe, maybe not. There's just not as, as many fish as I hoped in here, maybe. But I only had 24 hours, give it a good go. But you saw how confident I was and I am confident in zigs at any time, really. But when I was seeing them things yesterday, I sat there last night just in anticipation of a bite, but it hasn't happened. Unfortunately, this is the last week of the zigs on here, so they only run them up to the end of Feb, hence why I come over here for them sort of last gasps if you like. However, Oxford is absolutely prime for zig fishing, and you can use them throughout March and April, which are a great month for zig fishing, so I reckon that's where I'll be going next. Well, like I said, next time you see me, I'll be in Oxford. There I am. I was actually here last week on Stone Acres, which is where I have set up now, and I had a mega one. It was looking real good for it. Found some fish, and I had a real nice fish, one that I've not had before as well, so I was buzzing. I've set myself a little bit of a campaign this season to try and nick a couple of the ones that are still in here that I haven't caught. But apart from that, like I say, I'm in Oxford, I've turned up last night, dropped back on Stone Acres ahead of the cameras just to see if it still looks good for it on a zig. It really doesn't. This isn't Stone Acres weather. Last week it was all nice, blue skies and all that. Whereas this week it's a bit overcast, looking a bit grim. And for me, that says Christchurch all day long. So I'm going to wind these rods in, get myself over to church and see what's happening over there. times I got up this tree and seen herds of carp just back in two real short or even out in the pond. If they were up in the way as out here I'd definitely see them now. A bit of sun or a bit of ripple just glares them up. Can't see anything yet. But yeah brilliant just to get up here and be able to, it's great for judging the lines, fly up here in the morning. Right there about 60 yards bump, clip up again. <sighs> Nothing yet, looks like there's a bit of rain coming over actually. Not what we need for zigging. I'm not even halfway round and I'm starting to remember why I love this place so much. Literally spotted a few fish just pinpricking the surface out here, just sort of flattened off on the back of the wind. And uh, yeah, seen them definitely fish under the surface. Um, and then I've gone a bit further down, I've chucked the bottle in there, there's a lad in there. And then I've gone further down, another swim on the end of this wind, got up a tree, some fish, sort of five or six, couple of real good ones, just come in past, a couple of rod lengths out, four or five foot down. Um, even if I end up fishing up here, that's a great bit of knowledge to, that I've picked up. The swimming around are about four, you know, I can make them out, but only sort of just, not scale for scale. When I see them scale for scale, top two feet. When you're just seeing shapes and shadows, that's four or five foot. So yeah, great that I've got that knowledge. But yeah, I feel like this, on the back of the wind is just saying, you know, this wind stale. Everything, I've spoke to a couple of lads that I know already that are on here, there's only three or four on, said it's done a few bites on the bottom, believe it or not, um, last week, but then it's gone dead. No one's seeing much, no one's catching much, the hatches are going off, and in my mind, I'm playing it out, and I'm like, they know when they've been had a bit of pressure on, you know, it done seven or eight bites in a few days um, off the bottom, they know what to do. Up in the water, we know we're safe up here. Here. Literally, I'm excited now. I just seen one stick its head out. 
Not that we needed to see it. I was happy enough with the bits and bobs pinprick and I know it is 100% signs of carp just sat under the surface. These couple of coots drifted over, one of them twitched off and then one's just gone, what, like that. Dead subtle, real just total ziggy show. Just came up like Where's Scott with his zigs? <laughs> yeah. yeah, mate he's just packing down now. There's someone in there, but I'll put a bottle in there obviously. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and get the kit, I think. We're rounding the swim, took a little bit of effort, but as they say, effort equals reward. Obviously, see them couple of fish, and that's really got me buzzed up, honestly. It just bring me back loads of memories. I've done a lot of time on here over the years, more so years ago. I mean, these trees behind me here, I was taller than them when they were first planted. Kind of makes me feel a bit old. But yeah, like I say, ready to go. Gonna set the kit up. All we've got to do, this is the beauty of zig fishing. Doesn't take loads of disturbance. I'm not feeling for, you know, little gravelly areas and that. As long as I'm getting dropped through the water column with the marker float, get myself a depth. Couple of, you know, I'm sort of gonna probably fan the zigs out different distances, different depths, play around, probably different colours. But yeah, I'll get a sort of an average depth for the water in front of me. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be sort of between 14 and 16 foot because the water's really up. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to guess on what depths I'm going to go for just yet, but having seen them fish down there from the trees, they looked around about that four or five foot down mark. That's all I've got to go on so far. But like I said, beauty of the zigs, it's nice, easy fishing. It only takes a little wind in, bite a foot off, change the colour. One, one cast back out to the clip, it's nice and easy, little disturbance, but yeah, I'm gonna get set up and then we'll get into digging. Fairy cake, anyone? Can't risk this float not coming up. I want to keep all disturbance to a minimum. So I've got myself a little boom on the marker, folks. Sometimes I'll just run the run the main line through the lead. But yeah, I can't risk it. And a boom always guarantees that that float will come up. I don't really want to put any disturbance out there, but what weather goes up and down. And if I know one thing about zigs. Sometimes they've just got to be inch perfect. If they're not on that right height, as be, be on a different lake. I'm doing it all at the start of the session, so I just know precisely the depth for each direction that I'm casting at. It's 13 foot there, 13 and a half foot. I had a little lead up out there and forgot how weedy Christchurch can be. I mean, it's not majorly weedy, but there's definitely a little bit of old weed down there. So I did have to put maybe three or four extra casts out than I wanted to, but I'm a great believer in getting all the work done as soon as I get down here. I haven't got to mess around at all for the rest of the session now. I found a few, three beautiful zones, 12 wraps, 12, 10 and 13 wraps. So it's probably a channel in this weed, no doubt, by the fit, you know, sort of working it out. Depth wise, you've got around about 13 to 14 left to right. So I'm going to stagger them at 9, 10 and 11 foot. That's around about three, three and a half foot down, depending on which rod it is. Rig wise, I've up to the 13 pound because of the weed that I mentioned, obviously. I don't want to risk, you know, I don't want to work, do all the work and then risk losing them, knowing that the weed's out there as well, because you can, you know, I've done it before thinking, oh, you know, trying to play with the finesse and finna lines and all that. As soon as I know there's weed around, I don't want to take any chances. And that 13 pounds that effect is absolutely, honestly, so strong. I've had to, I've had big old bite, bolt battles with them before, got over the top of them, lifting it out, and it never breaks on me. So massive confidence in that. And like I said, touched on earlier, really, it's about, I'm trying to replicate these, you know, these little mimic, these little fly hatches going off. And this is exactly what these little barrels do for me. You know, I was forever trimming down little bits of foam, whipping right up and all that. You know, it, it, they took a lot of time. It's just, you know, these are liners and these little barrels, I'm not trying to sell it to you. You know, it does what it says on the tin. It is literally as easy as 
tying on an hook. I knock was not as well, just so there's not a, you know, a, a, a strangulation knot down at the hook point. That's where the mo uh, down at the eye of the hook, sorry, because that's where the most pressure is going to go. So I do a knot was not, and then just slide this barrel up. You can, you know, you can have it as far up the shank of the hook as you want. I like to sit it just over me. Knot was not really. It grips all that knot tight. And then lastly, size eight curve point hook. Absolutely razor out of the pack. No need to touch it up. And then I just literally blacking it off with the old jag pen. Burn it with a lighter just to dry it rapid, but don't do the hook point just because I don't want to have to run a lighter over that and get little bobbly bits of the, the pen. It'll bubble a little bit if you burn it too much, and I want that hook to be absolutely razor. And I actually quite like there's a little silver fleck there. You know, it reminds me of you know maybe fry or what have you. You know, when they're chasing the fry, just gives me that little that little bit of an edge. I think in my mind could be so far from the truth, but it works. I've caught plenty of fish doing it, so. Down at the lead end, I've just got a standard lead clip, big five ounce lead. I always use as big a lead as I can get away with, just for that initial hook in really, and then it's down to me to set the hook on the strike. I've got a long anti-tangle sleeve, and I still put a little tiny bit of putty on them ridges there, because I believe it gives it, well it does, you know, I've tested it in the edge, it gives it that little bit of uplift, you know, that bit of putty will just settle it down. It's enough to pull this, this down, and then if I get a fish that's coming over the top and sucking them up, that foam's gonna fire up and be able to lift up rather than it be stranded. You know, don't want it all sat taut. I actually like this little bit of give in the zig, so it can go up for obvious reasons. I just tie my six turn grinning knot, Slide up the anti tangle sleeve over the swivel and ready to go. I've tied one up, gonna tie two more. I've got two more to tie up. This one's got a fleck of colour on it. The other two are just gonna be black and black. Cast them out, gotta clip the rods up, sorry. Cast them out, that's me settled for the night. As easy as that. Just making sure. There's no mud up the zig line. And then, last thing, make sure it all sits nice and true, no twist. Perfect, that. And literally, I just like the, the beauty of being able to cast from the water is actually an edge, just rather than sitting them on the bank behind you and all that, catching on twigs. And you know, you're always a bit paranoid, I find. So, I can just sit in the water there. As I pull back, it's just going to fold over. And off she goes. It's only a short cast. Right. Trees are good. Right, where am I? That hell there. That's the one. Yes. <laughs> Always trying to keep my eye out for the zig. You've got to see it, got to see it fluttering in the air. One thing I always try and do is don't get distracted by the lead. If you're looking at the lead like you generally usually would with a normal sort of size rig, you won't see the foam. You need to be looking for the for the foam. Uh, I know that sounds hard to do, but you will see it as long as you don't get distracted by the lead. And a little tip, I suppose is follow the wind. If you see the lead and it's blowing left to right, look on the right hand side of it, vice versa. Always like casting in a crosswind with zigs because you'll see it fluttering downwind. Obviously the lead flies true and the foam just carries with the wind. What I do with my clutch first is just enough. Don't, it doesn't matter if it's slack, but not too slack. Enough so the fish can take line. Generally, you get a back drop. And you need to gain line real quick to get to that hook point and set it in. I don't like a real slack clutch, but every now and then you will get a ripper. And all I do, once the line's sort of pretty much straight direct to the lead, and especially when I'm using mono, just, as soon as it's jumping back up under tension, 
that's enough. Like I'm not like taking all the elasticity right out of the line because I've learned from mistakes before where I've cranked it right up in the belief that you know once it picks it up it'll pull, you know, take all the elasticity out and pull on the hook. It really doesn't. What it has done is cost me fish before not discharging the lead because you've got to imagine as soon as it lifts it's under that much tension ready to almost recoil back to me it lifts it up as soon as a little bit of weight especially if they're being sneaky just shaking their head trying to get rid of it and lifts a little bit of weight and it pulls towards me and lifts a bit of weight pulls towards me that's going against what the lead clip is about it's got to be pulled from that end to discharge that lead so yeah really don't put too much tension on that mono with braid i can tighten right down because it's direct but I don't like the spring in action of the mono Super sensitive. See the carp god's hands now. It's been a long day. <laughs> Only just managed to get rods out. But it's been worth it. You know, that was a long old move from the bottom end of Stone Acres to the far bank of Christchurch. It's a big old mooch. Um, but yeah, hopefully going to be worth it. Well, it is worth it already. Beautiful sunset, a few carp around earlier on. Hopefully, ain't caused too much disturbance. Funnily enough, we actually, um, as we were leaving Stoneacres, one of the, the regular lads, Litchie, he whacked one out on a zig. Mega carp as well it was. And funnily enough, it was the one that I had just last week. But wow, it's a mega fish. And uh, yeah, great to see all the lads in that. Standard Stoneacres, everyone gets around, you know, gets involved, helping out how it should be really on a place like that. Hopefully there's a bite on the cards or at least see something this evening. I'll be up first light, I'll be up ears on the pond tonight, at least being able to locate where they are if they're not in front of me. Hopefully they are and they don't go too far. I'm, I'm imagining that that bit of weed out here, I mean it could be weedy elsewhere, but I'm imagining that's gonna be a little bit of a magnet for them. They were clearly there this morning for whatever reason. Same conditions in the morning. That's always a great, great thing, especially in the spring. There's no, anything that's gonna move fish, it's either gonna be changing weather conditions or changing angling pressure. We have put a bit of pressure in here, but the conditions are staying the same. So fingers crossed, the fish stay here or come back at least. Bit of a quiet night on the rods. Probably expected I had to put out a few more casts than I would have wanted to. But at the same time, it's only early, still only early. And by the time I'd walked around here yesterday off Stone Acres and all that carry on, it's like 11, 12 o'clock. So I'm hoping they're gonna repeat the same process. And that I'm hoping that that's what they'd done the night before. Spent, sorry, forgot to say that. I heard fish down there. I got up around about half two, although I'm sort of committed to the filming and it's not great to, burn yourself out because obviously you've got a lot to do during the day. I can't sleep when them fish are active, I'm active and I was up and on it and listening and I could hear fish a lot further down the pond and them fish were thumping out, do -do -do you know, proper feeding shows. So sort of getting my mind in, in the lake, you know, I've not been on this lake all year, for, for years really. So I'm just trying to read the situation real quick, as quick as I can. I'm thinking, right, so the feeding down there, they were up here by 11, 12 o'clock yesterday. Are they feeding down there, coming up here for a chill among this weed? This plan could be so far from the truth, but in my mind, that's what I'm hanging on to for now. But I have also seen a couple of fish short in front of a swim down here called the plate. It's only sort of 60 yards down. See a couple of fish short, uh, heard a couple of fish short show, got up a tree up there, see one in the edge, a couple come past like that. And there's been a couple out in the open water in front of there as well. So there's a few options sort of brewing in the background if I need it, but I'm, in a minute, I'm still just hanging on. Just to, just to see if these fish turn back up. I have seen one 30 yards to me right, one a bit further over the pond that just sort of stuck its head out real subtly, but sort of up in the water shows that I want to be seeing. So for now, just going to sit on my hands that little bit. You know, I have been guilty of it before, being a bit hasty, making a move, just, you know, jumping on the fish where they are at the time. Sometimes you've got to give them that little bit of time, see if they come back. So a bit of brekkie, cup of tea, 
watch the water, we'll go from there. What a winter I have had, honestly, without a doubt, my best ever winter's fishing, especially on Dinton. Started off really well, I had a, what was it, 38 pound, real scaly, deep grey thing. My first proper one from Black Swan as well. And the first time I've properly given it a go, I've only ever flitted on there. All the fish that I actually caught were all in different situations. They were all on zigs. Whoever said zig fishing, or if anyone thinks zig fishing is for small fish, couldn't be further from the truth, if anything, they are a real big fish method in my opinion. So the first one I actually had on a real low zig in some deeper water as they were com coming up a shelf. Noticed that the fish were over on the far bank in the deep water and then as the sunlight started to hit the water they would come up into that shallow water. I was just hitting them as they come up the shelf. That was a mega mega cop. More than happy with that and to break me sort of dint and big uns with that one, I was made up. I actually had my PB mirror this winter, which was a 57 pounder called Big Tail. Again, this was right down the other end of the pond. I hadn't seen a single thing. I was almost going on a whim. And all of a sudden one morning, bang, 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 they just started firing out everywhere. The rod's gone off literally in the dying minutes of me winding in. I, I, was, I had to be off. If, if, honestly, I wanted to stay, but I had to be off. The rod's gone and it was a 57 pounder. I actually only managed to get it on my vlog footage as well. I was in that much of a rush, I couldn't get anyone down. I just had to go out, a really important meeting that I had to make. But yeah, 57 pounder, almost celebrated it a bit to myself. Look at the size of this. Oh, my days, sick. This is a big fish. Wicked, my head's blown off, right. Go to the other side quick. Quick still on the old phone. Oh, there's people coming. Don't want people to see me. So you might tell the wranglers. Oh, my days. Look at that. <laughs> yes. Beast. You know what it's like, as soon as you start catching and catching, it just literally went on and on and I could, you know, I just felt deadly with these zigs. You know, anywhere I put them, if I could find the fish, get in the patrol routes, that all that sort of thing, you know, I, I was on it, I was on my game and I managed to pick up another one. Again, a totally different situation in that deeper water that I mentioned earlier, I actually fished for them in there. The deepest part of the lake, as far as I know, it's like 20 foot of water. I caught it on an 18 foot zig in the middle of the night, like three in the morning. I mean, like if that doesn't give you confidence, because if I had rigs on the bottom, this thing's 18 foot up, there's no way I would have caught it. So yeah, that gave me massive confidence. And that was a real, real special fish called Paw Print. Real oaky brown, mega winter colours, 48 pounder as well. And that literally was, that's a year maker, never mind a winter maker. That is a fish that would make, if I banked all year after that, I'd be more than happy. But yeah, real good average, <laughs> 38. A 57 and a 48, what a winter that is. Whoever said zig fishing was for small fish, couldn't be further from the truth. Wow, which had three bites out of here this winter, 38. 57 and 48. <laughs> Mega. That is what it's all about. Get in. <laughs> yes, buddy. The day's starting to drag on now. It's gone 12 o'clock. I've given them enough time and I've seen a better opportunity next door in front of that plate swim. Been up and down that tree like a yo-yo. There's a nice spot glowing there that I might put a bit of bait on, but I've seen a few carp now and I've just seen one real good one as well. And that's convinced me to make the move. I don't want to wait for what might not happen. I'm going to go and fish for what's really happening. Bring these rods in now. Go down there with the rods, it's only 30, 40 yards, so I can let you go down there, rods, pods, wind in there, mark a float, 
and my rucksack as well because I will tie up some fresh eggs. I need to get a depth because these fish are only probably 20, 30 yards out. Going to have a go for them ones that I'm seeing first from the trees. See if I can literally visually get up and see the see the zig, see the distance and all that sort of thing. Talk you through what I'm doing when I get down there. I'm rambling on. I'm going to get the rods in and get down there. Gonna quickly tie up three open-ended zigs. What I mean by that is over depth. So that's about 14 foot there. I know it's probably gonna be see I'm only fishing down the shelf, so it could be 15, 16 foot most. Like I said, I'm just gonna leave them open-ended. So everything's done basically. Ready for when I throw that marker out, get the depth quick. I'm only going to put one out straight in the centre. I know it to be the same depth all the way front, across the front of this swim. So yeah, get that one depth and I can trim them all down accordingly. So I'm just putting that pressure in the swim in one hit. If I mark up now and then tying up three zigs, it's probably a 10, 10, 15 minute gap between them leads going in. And I don't want to do that. Foot. I'm putting a 12 and two 11s because they are, I think, about two foot down. But the cloud's getting worse and worse, so I'm gonna put a couple three foot down as well. Right, this one's ready to go. Let's do it. Lovely. Get them up. They've gone out absolutely sweet and I'd be lying if I weren't super confident. However, in this zig game you just never know, but it's the sort of thing I would be looking for to place a zig in front of them. A fish patrolling and moving, they're definitely more hookable when they're like that as opposed to you know, casting at fish that are just sat there, milling around, doing nothing, maybe just chilling out after a bit of safety. You know, these are the ones that are hookable on the move. So yeah, very confident. And it's nice to have a bit of a different view, bigger view of the pond, keeping my eyes out for sort of an evening pond. Obviously, eared fish out in this area could quite easily push them out into the middle of the pond tonight, the rods that is. But we'll see, I'm open, I'm, I'm, my mind is totally open at the minute, but like I say, it is nice getting this open swim. See a big chunk of the lake as opposed to that little wet box down there. That is a wave of blue carp. If one of them bursts off now, it is game on. That one in the middle is especially very, very chunky. Look at him. That's black eye, that is, you can tell already. Definitely. Oh my God. Come on. Bubbling up. Something to look out for, that is. Bubbling under the surface. He's a wide boy, come on. Live zig bite, aerial view. Have some of that, won't we? Oh my God. made a couple of tweaks to the zigs after being up the tree. I see a couple of big waves of uh, carp come through. Started off as ones and twos and then a big wave of carp come right over them zigs. And I'm a great believer in if them zigs are in their faces, 
I should have known about it, one twitching off. I'm not saying I should have hooked it, but you know, I should have got some sort of response and say that's in our faces. I knew I was fishing down, but it seems like the, they are a lot higher in the water than I, than I thought. So I've got down a tree, I've left a 12 footer out. It's about 14 foot of water. So I've left the right hander, which was a 12 foot, and just retied up uh, the, two, the left hander in the middle rod, put 13 footers out. So that should be right in their faces. So again, I'm gonna go up the tree, see if I get some sort of response. Look, this is all trial and error stuff that I've done years and years ago of, you know, tweaking and changing zigs and one little tiny change can make a big difference. And I've also gone the other way where I've not changed anything all day and just literally sat through the pain of them swimming around when they're either too shallow or the wrong colour. And, you know, I started to real start tweaking, 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 and change things and it'd get me the bites. It's a little bit more disturbance than you'd want in your swim, but I'd rather have rigs where I really, really want them. So we've been moving the kit into the swim and it is time to sort of say these have had long enough really. I've been back up and down that tree a couple of times and I just feel like that wave of carp that came over has not come back. It's been the old straggler. These have had long enough now. Can't wait any longer. I'm which going to, same approach as last night, I'm going to get the float out. There's a clear zone out there that I know will definitely be there. So it shouldn't be too much messing around. I'm not expecting to find any weed. It's around about the 17, 18 rat mark with the water level being up, could be a bit further. I've clipped up at 18 wraps, gonna wang it out, bring it back until I find the clear area, pop it up, get an exact depth on it, and then I've got a good idea that these fish are swimming around two, three, four foot at most below the surface, so I'm probably gonna do exactly that. One two foot down, one three foot down, and one four foot down. It's about all I can do. I think there's an opportunity on the deck, but after seeing, you know, from what I heard last night, that is the, these fish booming out. But after seeing them cruising around under the surface and some big girls as well, I just can't ignore it. So hopefully there's a bite on the cards. I've got one night left to make it happen. Let's wind these rods in. Sorted. It is 16 foot out there. And going back on memory, pulling out all the stops two foot down and three foot down were always the winning the heights really so that's what i'm going to go for two one two foot down and two of them three foot down black on blacks and i'm actually going to whittle down as well to the 11 pounds fx just because honestly it used to get like we used to trim everything right down real fine even right down to size 12 hooks and little sort of half a tic tac size as a foam glued to the back and as fine as you could get away with i'm happy to drop down to the 11 pound the weed isn't anywhere near as bad up here obviously it's that little bit deeper and it is a predominantly uh, weedy end up that end where i was uh, yeah, last night so yeah that's it three black on blacks like i would have done years ago as sort of fine and dainty as I can get away with and hopefully that's enough to trip one of these up because although they have been caught on zigs over the years they are zig wizards as well so they know when they're being fished for anything too blatant I don't think don't think is the one every core has its day I'm constantly flipping and changing I think some people can be quite static with zigs I'm totally the opposite if there's fish there and I know they're catchable on zigs they're in them upper ways I'm not getting bites there's something going wrong I've got my depths right I've got everything right Cool change can just make that instant reaction. Watching this physically happen from the trees, I was sold on colours from that day on. Them rods have gone out, absolutely bang on. Can't do anything else now. It's all down to the fish. But, you know, I've only been here, what, just over 24 hours, and I feel like I'm really getting into their, what they're up to. Not too sure about in the night, but definitely in the day, if they repeat that same pattern, you know, I've got till tomorrow afternoon, if need be. See if they do the same thing, I can get zigs in close ahead of them if you like. I know the depths, I haven't got any messing around to do, so I'm just basically building a plan ready. But beauty zigs is it can happen at any time, through the night, morning, daytime, absolutely any time. Them fish are spending a lot of time in the upper layers. If one comes past and snaffles it, it's absolutely game on. Bye. 
Well, I am absolutely buzzing. Officially the first day of spring today, and I am more than happy with this one. That's the thing with these eggs, can just go off at any time, middle of the night, it's about three in the morning, two foot off the surface, and this one's gone off. Doesn't surprise me, I've got so much confidence when I'm using them anyway, but it still baffles me. You know, it's, I think it always will. Uh, you know, you know, a couple of feet under the surface on a little bit of black foam, but it works. And this is a bite that I don't think I could have got unless I was doing exactly that. So, more than welcome. I am made up. Winter has been very kind to me this year. I've never had a winter's fishing like it, honestly. Them little bits of foam, I've done it all for me. 